I hate group work. That's the first thought that many of you have when one of your professors gives a group assignment. It's hard to find time for everybody to get together and meet during your busy schedule. Once you do meet, it's hard to stay on track and not talk about the game or run down other rabbit trails. Then when you actually get some work done, it's hard to decide which path to go down and be able to complete the assignment. Who does what? Some of you go, it's my grade. I don't want other people affecting my grade and my academic career. And some of you simply just say, I always end up doing everything just so the project can get done. Now some of you are excited when you hear about a group project because you think you can kind of get by with doing little or maybe even nothing. You're the people who make the people who hate group work hate group work. Stop it. So why do professors make those assignments? We get it. Group work is hard. It messes up your schedule. So why do we choose to give you those assignments? Chapter four has talked about critical thinking. Group work makes you face personalities that you're not used to, that aren't like you. And when you hear those different perspectives, they challenge you to think differently, to think deeply, to think critically. You have some people who are active. You have some people who are reflective in the way they learn. You have some people who are verbal and some people who are visual. So think of a group, two active verbal people grouped with two people who are reflective and, and visual. Kind of sounds like a mess. But what it means is those visual people will be able to explain the information and see the information differently than the verbal people. And when you get together into that learning environment, it challenges you to think differently than you ever have before. Those different personalities, that agitation, we think that that will help you understand the material more, better, to think critically about it, to analyze the information differently, to evaluate the information differently. And then as a group, with those different personalities, you create something with that information different than you would have created on your own. The second reason that professors give group work is because the workforce is dominated by group projects. When you get into the workforce, you're gonna be in groups, in companies, working with different people, many of whom maybe you don't click with. Maybe you wouldn't go hang out with them and get a meal with them or go to a, a football game with them. But you're gonna be asked to create things that push your company forward. How are you gonna deal with people you don't click with? They maybe don't even like. Or when you get into a management position and you get to choose your team, how are you gonna choose a team that's not just full of a bunch of people like you who are just yes men? How are you going to make a team that's dynamic and creates and pushes you deeper and deeper on the project that maybe you couldn't even have done all by yourself? So the next time you're given that group project and your first thought is, I hate group work, it's okay. But realize this is an opportunity for you to think differently about the material than you would on your own. To have thoughts and to put a project together that maybe you never would have created if you would have worked independently. And it's also an opportunity for you to work on your group dynamics to figure out how you can encourage and facilitate others learning as they facilitate you learning. Chapter four has some great strategies for group projects, some things to keep in mind. Number one, don't be a social loafer. Alan Ingram conducted an experiment in which people were blindfolded to play a game of tug of war. When they thought that they were all by themselves, they pulled harder 18% harder than when they thought they were on a team. Don't do that. Find what you're passionate about in the project and be a part of it. Number two, turn in your work as early as possible. Everybody's working on this project. The earlier that everybody turns it in and is ready to put it together, the more refined it will be and the better grade you'll make. Number three, communicate with your group through email, through text, 
as you see each other in class, give everybody an update of how things are going. Go above and beyond. This is something that's meant to expand your horizons and to help the group be the best that they can be. And last is be respectful of other people's ideas. You're a part of a group so that you can hear different things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of all by yourself. Once you've turned in the project, you're finished with the group. Take a few minutes when you're walking to your next class or, or standing in line at the cafe and think about the group. Ask yourself some questions. What worked well? What came together and you were surprised at the finished product? Why do you think that was? Who did you like working with? Why? Was it their personality? Were, were they really good at, at getting their assignments turned in early? Who wouldn't you work with again? And if you were forced to work with that person, what are three things that you could do to help you click better with them? Your personalities to, to work better together, to be clear on what assignments are due when and who's doing what. Doing those things honestly might not change your opinion on groups. You might still hate group work, but hopefully you know that group work is for your good and for the good and the success of your academic and your professional career. Thank you.